Hi again then guys and welcome to the 60th installment of Weekend Warriors, the review series for the very, very broad category of sports cars. That could be anything from 2 plus 2 coupes of a more or less luxury inclination, like a big Merc or an Aston, or it could be something more like, for instance, a mid-level coupe, something more like a Hyundai Coupe, for instance, or a Hyundai Genesis. Then you could have more traditional sports cars, ragtops, if you will, and this falls more into that category. It is a ragtop for a start, it's a two-seater, the very strict base definition of a sports car, front engine, rear-wheel drive, two doors, two seats, and a ragtop. And TVR as a brand is not only one of my personal favourite manufacturers ever, there is not a single TVR that I don't like, in fact, even as far back as the Grand Tourer, the Vixen, the Wedges, even, I love them all. But this one probably is above all else my favourite TVR. I love the Speed 12, but to me the Speed 12 is kind of in a whole different category. That technically would be my favourite TVR, but in the real world, if you're talking attainable production cars, then nothing else comes close to the Chimera. I love this car and it's a vehicle which can very easily be misunderestimated. It's very easy to think that this car is just a Soberer with the roof chopped off. It's not. It's really not. It's so much more than that. For a start, the engine is completely different. Because, of course, the Cerbera, originally, before it became just the Cerbera, when it was still the Cerbera Speed 6, that car originally had, as the name suggests, a straight-six engine. The Chimera does not. This one, for instance, has a 5-litre V8. So, immediately, that's a totally different animal to be working with. It's a significantly bigger engine on this car than the Cerbera has. Now, in terms of what this car can do on Gran Turismo 2, to be completely honest, as much as I love this car, as I said, it's my favourite TVR in real life, I do at the same time have to admit that on certain tracks it is really not a very good car. On city circuits in particular, like Seattle for instance, this car does not handle that well. It's extremely tail happy, very twitchy, very slippery and has much more, I would say, the handling that people consider. TVRs to generally have, and it's older games like this which kind of gave people that impression. And of course in real life TVRs can be dangerous to drive, so it's not completely unfounded to think that way, but a lot of them are a lot better on racing games than people think. The Cerbera is a perfect example, that's an amazing track car when you tune it well. This one is much more of a sports car in a general sense, and what I mean by that is that the Cerbera feels more focused, it feels more ready to take on a track, it feels like the Cerbera kind of wants to be on the track, in a similar way to something like a Sagaris, that's where it's at home. With the Chimera, it's just not really that kind of car. As I said, it's not a Cerbera with the roof taken off, it's so much more than that, this is much more of a long distance, driving down the coast kind of sports car, it doesn't necessarily need to give you the best lap times because it's not about that, it's about the driving pleasure, the look and the sound of the car, the bigger effortless power that the 5 litre V8 allows you to have, and that feels different, it feels totally different in fact to the Sobra. Now in its fully tuned form on GT2, which incidentally does not have a racing counterpart, there is no race modify for this car, it's got some pretty good numbers. As I said, it is a 5 litre V8, it's naturally aspirated, rear wheel drive, you're looking at 528 horsepower, fully tuned. That's very good for a naturally aspirated car. It also puts out 457 foot-pounds of torque, and that's one of the biggest advantages of that big V8. The weight, though, is really low. 975 kilos with the full weight loss package is amazingly good. And that means that the horsepower per tonne is very impressive. 542 is among the best of the sports car class, in fact. It's a fantastic overall package, and considering the 62,000 credit price, even though this is the top of the range Chimera, that is a very healthy overall spec. And don't get me wrong, it's not a bad car. On country circuits, circuits with more of a high speed flow, such as here, Apricot Hill, it feels so much better. There's something about 90 degree corners and hills that this car really does not respond well to. But on a flowing track, where you never really go too slow, 
that's where it thrives. This car loves it around this track. It can fly through the corners remarkably well, and it's a really fun car. So it's a vehicle which has definite use for those who want to use it. I would recommend it though more for the fun factor, if you are, like me, a super fan of the Chimera. But if you are gonna use it, just be selective where. But that's it for this pick overall. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.